Welcome back to Afternoon Garage. So uh, if you've been following this, you know, I didn't expect to have any broken, major broken parts in this. And of course, I had broken head studs. So I got them all out and uh, cleaned the heads up, cleaned the intake manifold up, start to clean this block up a little bit. And well, let's throw it together. Hopefully I don't have any more problems with these things after I put new ones in. Well, let's check those out. All right, pretty much got all those cleaned up. And uh, now it's time to deal with these studs here. You can see how many of them actually broke. There's two of them here, and then all the rest of them just got kind of twisted up, and that's kind of an interesting shape there. So I went and purchased this. It was about 700 or 800 bucks. It gives you uh, 24 studs and uh, all the nuts and washers and hey there's a little bit of uh, assembly lubricant that's kind of cool i think i'll be using that but uh these are guaranteed not to break supposedly and uh let's hope that doesn't happen anymore Now a week later or so, um, you know, I'm still kind of upset about the, well, the broken ring here. So I got a decent piston ring compressor. This is your, your standard style that you see. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it up a little bit and kind of press these halfway in there and then stick the, um, the, the pin in there. So what I got was this brand here. And I, I just want to kind of make sure that the piston ring end gap is going to be okay. Uh, you, you definitely don't want it too tight and you don't want it too loose either. Uh, so I, I've had to file these things in the past. So basically to check this is just kind of put it in the cylinder and then get a feeler gauge and, and just stick it in the gap there and it'll kind of tell you go, no go, exactly what you got here. So it, it looks like it's about half a, half a millimeter or so and I think the spec is like point three to, to one millimeter so that that ring end gap is going to be pretty good right there so um, i'm going to check this other ring this is the of course the second ring and then i'll check the compression ring here and uh, make sure that's in spec but other than that i'm gonna have to be really careful with this tool here uh, I, I tried to use it a little bit and i cut the crap out of my hands up here so it's going to be kind of tricky to press this button down and <laughs> wind this up. I'm not a really big fan of these. That's why I was kind of hoping that the, you know, the kind that I had would have worked, but hey, if it breaks rings like that, that's not good.
calipers here. So I'll take a depth measurement of the intermediate shaft. There's another 8.60. So it's 8.6 millimeters. Start with the uh, right bank here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. 77.54. It's 25.5 millimeters. So now I do math. 8.6. Plus 43.27 plus 25.5. 77.37. So that looks like it's just about right. I think I'll leave that one alone. Can't believe it. Jeez, really? That's unbelievable. I can't believe that's actually, it's right on the money. 131.35. Plus, the difference between the one cam to the other, 54.8, 132.17. So looks like this side is supposed to be, since this is 77.37 millimeters from this point here for the deck. Uh, well, you know, you add 54, which is the uh, distance between the two cam drive sprockets, and well, you come up with uh, 132. Point one, so it's at 131.3. So I'm gonna have to, well, see what thickness those shims are, and I take one or two of them out. Okay, each one's a half a millimeter. So uh, I think what I'll do is I'll just uh, 
I actually removed two of these things. And uh, yeah, check it again. Put this on here. Our goal is uh, 131 or 132.1, seven I think. And I'm at 132.36. So that's pretty darn close. Okay, so Z1 timing mark. All right, so we got uh, half a millimeter of valve lift. Um, that's about, well, three quarters of a millimeter. Not enough. So we'll rotate it till we do get 1.25. Or about there and you can see our pulley is well it's a couple degrees off so we'll take this out take the pin out rotate this backwards a little bit and uh, well try it again I'm gonna tighten this on there just a little bit well, that'll allow us to rotate this backwards till we get 1.25 millimeters of lift. Okay, there it is, 1.25 millimeters. So we kind of want to find out where that spot is. I think if you put in an exhaust rocker, well, it makes it so it kind of counterbalances itself. But this looks pretty good. We can just adjust it here. So we'll go to 1.25, find out where that hole is. And it looks like right about in here. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we'll put the uh, washer back on there. Now we'll turn it to number four. See if we get uh, same kind of valve lift. All right, and same thing, exactly, exactly the same as the other side. Looks like 0.51 millimeters, so half a millimeter of lift. So we'll get it to 1.25. Then rotate this to where it is, put the pin in it. Should be good to go. A few moments later. 1.25 millimeters of valve lift. Seem to be right at top dead center there. So let's torque these cams down and well put the rest of the rockers in. Valve covers on, get this thing buttoned up. Well now, with the installation of those exhaust studs, this long block is pretty much complete. So I'm basically where I was when I was wishing that I didn't have head stud problems. And now I've kind of cleaned up the intake and everything like that. So I'm gonna get the intake installed, and put the shroud on, and the fan, and you know, the engine mount bar and that kind of thing. Get the injection system kind of cleaned up, and well, we'll do that on the next episode. So if you got anything out of this video, give me a like, and well, subscribe if you haven't. I can use every subscriber I can get. Till next time.